Hi there, welcome to Camping Secrets. I'm Marky Mark, and today we're back looking at the Mercedes Marco Polo. We bought ours from new back in 2018, and I want to go through what optional extras we got added to the van compared with the standard version of the van, and which of those extras were useful, how much they cost, and which ones wouldn't we add on if we were buying today. But actually, things have changed with the Marco Polo today in 2022. For instance, the, the on the road price has massively gone up. Uh, we paid 52,000 pounds in 2018 for the standard model. When we'd added on all our extras, it was 58,000. And then we managed to get a discount. But today, the price for the on the road sport version of the Mercedes Marco Polo with the same size engine, the 220, D engine is 70,000. So things have massively changed, but actually today you get a lot more of the features that we paid extra for as standard features. So Mercedes Marco Polo extras, let's dig into this. So the first extra that I'm really glad that we paid for is metallic paint. It was around a £600 extra to pay on top of the standard price. But I know the van's not particularly clean at the moment, but I really think that metallic paint just gives that sort of glossiness to the exterior and makes the, when you've polished it, makes the light really shine off nicely. Whereas standard matte paint, uh, which comes as standard, it, it doesn't have that wow factor for me. So it's, in my view, an essential optional extra, extra the metallic paint. Next up is the 360 degree cameras for parking assistance on the Marco Polo. I really think this is useful as well. It was around a 350 pound upgrade, but if I get my other camera out, you'll be able to see these little cameras that are dotted around. So down here under the main Mercedes badge, we've got a little camera. And then each of the wing mirrors also has a camera. So you can see underneath here, uh, there we are, yeah, there. And then on the other side, under the wing mirror as well. So you can see it just there, boink. And then at the back, I think there's another one, must be. So uh, it's just a question of finding it. And obviously you've got normal parking sensors, front and back. And these come as standard, I believe, on the Marco Polo. So when you put the Mercedes Marco Polo into reverse, a little camera pops out. Okay, go for it. Well, hey, look at that. <laughs> that is brilliant. Cool. Yeah, so it's hidden away when you're parked up or going forwards. Hello. So what do these cameras dotted around the van do? So let's fire up the uh, screen inside with the ignition on and see what we can see. So having the 360 camera option gives you this little button here, which is not standard on the Marco Polo. If we press this and I shut the door because the door was blocking the camera, we get this great view. See, you can see my camera there in front. Uh, there's cameras everywhere. Let's just focus on the screen. So you get this amazing overhead view of the Marco Polo. Uh, with a sort of parking sensor zone at the front and then another one at the back. And that's with the conventional electrical proximity uh, uh, parking sensors. But then you've got this great bird's eye view of the van. And, and that sort of takes the images from the front, from the two wing mirrors and the back and sort of stitches them all together. So you can actually see in live time as people or things move around the van. You've also got a great view of the front here, which you can also, by adjusting down here, you can move it from 180 to a full 360 view of the car. 
So I absolutely love this. It's a really useful uh, thing to have for parking, especially when your visibility at the back is not that great. And if you've got things loaded up in the back, you know, camping stuff, sleeping bags and that, you can't see out of the back. Having this 360 camera is great and I definitely think it's worth the £350 upgrade from the standard Marco Polo. While we're in the car, it's worth talking about the main screen here. Now, when we were buying in 2018, there was two options. You could get a standard Garmin screen here with nav on the standard car without paying any extra. Uh, or you could pay an extra £2,000, I think it was, for the command module, which was a, a much faster process, a better, bigger screen um, with you know various improved navigation, better sound system. But we thought that the £2,000 extra, it wasn't really worth it. You've still had the functionality with the Garmin device. For instance, you know, we've still got nav. You know, the, the screen's not huge, but it's good enough, functional. Uh, you've got the Bluetooth, so we can basically connect phone to the device and play music. There's no integrated hard drive like the command uh, system had, but my view is these days most people do navigation and music from their phones, streaming via Spotify or whatever. All you really need, in my opinion, is a Bluetooth connection to the car and the basic module on our 2018 Marco Polo did that, the Garmin. So we saved £2,000 there. Today it's all different. Uh, there's the Mercedes-Benz user experience MBUX uh, system as standard now. So it's it's effectively their upgraded command and it's not an option now, you've basically got to pay for it and that's part of the reason why the on the road standard price has gone up so much, uh, having that MBUX system. And also what's changed on the newer Marco Polos is that the, all of the camper van stuff, for example, turning the fridge on or checking water levels, that's done through a dedicated system, but through the MBUX screen on today's Marco Polos. And they call that MBAC, uh, Mercedes-Benz Advanced Controls. Um, whereas on the older ones, we have this little uh, module down here uh, with the screen. And this, this controls all the camper van stuff. Okay, so while we're in the van, let's look at another optional extra that we had fitted, which is again, a standard fitment now, but if you're going for an older Marco Polo before 2021, I think it's definitely worth seeking out a Marco Polo with it, in our opinion. And that is the diesel auxiliary night heater, which heats up air and gives you hot pumped air, even if you're parked up with no electrical hookup or anything, it runs off diesel, uh, takes a tiny amount, it can run all night without affecting your fuel. Um, and I, I consider it in the UK an essential feature to pay extra for. Um, as I say, new new Marco Polo's now have it as standard. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so we're in the back of the Marco Polo now and underneath the passenger seat, we have this grill here. And this is actually the air vent out for the diesel heater, auxiliary heater. On the right hand side, just on this pillar, Got this interesting little protrusion here and this is actually a temperature sensor so this is connected to the control unit at the front of the Marco Polo down there uh, which is used to activate the heater and that feed back, feeds back the temperature and enables the control unit to set the temperature of the van to what you want so it's effectively being used like a, a thermostat in the front of the Marco Polo now and we've got the control unit and as I said on newer Marco Polos that's all done through the MBAC system on the main screen so it's all integrated and quite a nice solution you can remotely control a lot of features on the MBAC system remotely via your smartphone on new Marco Polos but that functionality is not available on our 2018 model. 
Um, and we use this little control unit here to control main, the Marco Polo functionality. So if we just turn this dial, we see six icons on the screen. I'm only gonna talk about this bottom left-hand one with the squiggly lines. That is the heater, the night heater, diesel heater. And uh, if you don't have these wiggly lines, it means the, not, the heater is not fitted. As I say, it was an optional extra. Uh, so that's the easiest way to check whether you've got it, uh, whether those wiggly lines are there. If we just click the button, we move into the heater menu. We can basically just turn it on or off here. Uh, if we click on, it moves to on, and we'll see what happens in a minute. And, and you can also set the temperature of when it turns on or off. So you can... So this is effectively, this is effectively that thermostat function where when it hit, hits the temperature that you've set, it will turn off the heater. Uh, so that's quite a nice feature to have. You don't want to get too hot. Uh, the, the night heater is three kilowatts, I believe. I'm just lying on the floor now just to have a look under the van. Show you the exhaust of the diesel heater. That little pipe there is the exhaust pipe. And I've turned the heater on now, so you should be getting carbon monoxide fumes coming out of here. And this is actually on the <coughs> left-hand side of the van. So the fumes are directed away under the left-hand side. And if you've got an awning fitted on this side, you don't want those fumes going into your awning. So you can run this diesel heater and not gas everyone <laughs> in an awning on the other side. Let's just go back to the heater here. You can hear it booting up now. It takes maybe a, a minute or two to get up to full strength. It goes through a little startup procedure. And now it's pumping out nice hot air. I guarantee you will not be disappointed getting one of these. So as I say, we paid around £2,000 to Mercedes to get that night heater fitted. And it was a brilliant buy. I really don't regret that at all. If you didn't get it fitted, you can get it fitted as an aftermarket accessory just on the open market. It's actually an Eberspacher uh, three kilowatt night heater. And I've read reports of other people getting other heaters. There's a planar heater and a Webasto, a Webasto heater. And that basically fits under the drive, under the passenger seat. It can be accessed. So essentially you just re remove this side part of the chair and get underneath here and fit that device, that heater. And you can hopefully hear it running now. And yeah, it does make some fan noise. But overall, I really think it's a, a worthwhile upgrade. And there's an extra little upgrade you could pay for back in the 2018 for the night heater. And that was a little remote control unit. And this is great, but it was an extra 200 pounds, I think, or something like that. But it means you can be lying in bed or up in the roof, use the little remote control to turn on and off the night heater. You don't have to get out of bed if you're feeling cold to warm the van up. I really like that. One of the best upgrades we paid for was the tow pack, which is this nice tow bar with swan neck. And we use this all the time when we're camping because we've got a bike rack that will go on there. We use the Thule Velospace XT3 uh, bike rack, which fits on this tow ball and basically can tilt out of the way to enable the boot to open with bikes on so it's absolutely great you can load up three bikes even massive e-bikes tilt them out of the way and still open the back and of course having the tow bar on your marco polo means you could tow a little trailer to carry more stuff to your destination or even a mini caravan or even a big caravan but i think the idea of having a an ariba or something like that towed on the back is great it extends your you could use the marco polo for your living space and maybe your, uh, your little caravan as a sleeping space it just opens up options so i really recommend getting a tow bar on your marco polo 
So what about the van itself? What upgrades did we get? Well, actually, not a lot. We went for the basic 163 horsepower engine. Uh, so there is a larger 300D option for the engine, and that gives a lot more horsepower. So as I say, ours is 163 horsepower. I think the 300D is up to about 230 horsepower now. What I will say honestly is that I don't really think you need that much power in the Marco Polo. The 163 horsepower is plenty, gets up all hills in the UK. We've been to the Lake District, Scotland, no problem whatsoever. What I would say is we didn't go for the four wheel drive um, Marco Polo. And I, I think if I had the chance now, I would go for the four, four wheel drive. We've had some snow in recent years and this thing in snow is just terrible. We've slid, nearly had accidents. It's our only vehicle. So I think if I had my time again, I would plump for that four wheel drive. I don't think you need the 300 uh, D option particularly, but you know, if that floats your boat, go for it. Um, in terms of trim, again, we had the metallic blue. That's what I said. We didn't pay extra for the AMG styling, you know, the skirts, the making it look sportier, all the bigger wheels really. Uh, I quite like the standard wheels on, on the Marco Polo. And as I say, lots of things came as standard, the cream leather, the yacht, dark yacht flooring, sort of wood effect, all standard. You know, at the time in 2018, I think it was an absolute bargain uh, for what you get compared with the VW California. Now, less of a bargain in my view, uh, but you know, it's still a great camper van. The final upgrade that we paid for was this Omnister awning. And again, this was around 700 pounds onto the price of the Marco Polo. And this basically winds out. I'm gonna do a little video on this, so I won't do it now, but basically winds out and provides a sunshade um, for use in really sunny weather. And you can sit under it and not get absolutely roasted by the sun. For that purpose, I think it's really good. The problem is in the UK, you don't get much sun. And uh, so we haven't used this awning particularly much. And we actually get an inflatable drive away awning and attach it onto this awning, onto this Omnister. So I also don't like the way it, it sticks out. I think it's probably a bit of a drag, probably doesn't help you uh, miles per gallon. It can rattle a little bit. And overall, I would say, I probably wouldn't buy this Omnister if I was buying the Marco Polo again, purely because we don't get enough sun in the UK to make it worth its while. I, I, I think we've probably only used it two or three times in the four years we've had it. It's, you know, it's just personal preference. Um, but the times we did use it were when we went to France and you got scorching sun day after day, then I think it's worth it. Uh, if you're in the UK, I'd think carefully about it and I sh certainly wouldn't you know, make it a deal breaker if you're buying a used Marco Polo. You know, especially as you can get, you know, aftermarket driveway awnings that do just as good a job and you can choose whether to bring them along or not. Um, so, yeah, that's that. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, I've been through the list of the upgrades that we paid for back in 2018. And for the most part, I've been very happy with them all. You know, the metallic paint, the 360 degree camera, uh, the internal night heater is probably the best option that we paid for. And the tow bar has been an absolute godsend for taking bikes camping. And just having that towing capability is really useful, I think. The one upgrade that I don't think was worth it was the Omnister awning. Probably wouldn't have that if I had my time again. It looks a little bit ugly and we just don't use it. But apart from that, you get so much on the Marco Polo as standard, you can't really go wrong, even though today the price is pretty excessive, I would say. Anyway, I hope that's been of some use. Uh, I'm Marky Mark, we're Camping Secrets. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We'll be doing plenty more videos on the Marco Polo over time and other camping gear reviews. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.